Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World, your home for road trips and racetracks. Today, we're going to be continuing our NSX audio adventures. Uh, if you've been following the channel for the past handful of weeks, you will know this has been a little bit more of an ordeal than I anticipated. Just popping in there to try and replace some speaker amps turned into now attempting to re-engineer for the most part the audio system in the car. Um, not re-engineer, but reconstitute it with a lot more components than I anticipated, we'll say. Uh, hopefully though, by the end of this video, fingers crossed, if all goes well, we should end up with a functional, if not finalized from a componentry standpoint, car audio system in the NSX that will let us at least, uh, you know, have some tunes while we're driving to and from tracks uh, until I can come up with a, a better solution for the long term. But that's a story for another day. Let's get started today with uh, a few of the packages that I've received while I've been working on the um, uh, vapor barriers. If you watched the last video, I did get some stuff in the mail since then. So let's see what that all is and then we will get started. So while I've been working on reconstituting vapor barriers and fixing Lamborghini window switches, I have gotten a few things in the mail. Uh, these are just a couple of adapter cables that will connect a uh, USB-C to RCA cables and a three and a half millimeter jack to RCA cables. Uh, that's gonna be important because this thing right here, which is a four band equalizer uh, and preamp, has several inputs to it done via RCA cable. Uh, the idea being that this is more, hopefully more compact than the head unit that I've been temporarily using. So the plan would be to hide this somewhere but have multiple inputs. So I have a USB-C for uh, most modern Android phones and then a three and a half millimeter for everything else. Now I also got, uh, I don't remember where I got this from. I'll put a link in the description to where I bought all this stuff. But this is a replacement speaker for the, what I understand now is the Bose 901 series. Uh, this one was just shy of 30 bucks, <laughs> uh, which is substantially less than what you would, uh, what you would pay for the original unit there. Uh, I do believe it is a paper cone instead of a poly, um, like some kind of polymer coated cone. Excuse me, uh, 10 millimeter socket rip. Um, <laughs> so uh, it might be a little bit more moisture sensitive, which is extra motivation to do the vapor barriers that I have now completed. So I don't anticipate that being a problem. If it is a problem, they were less than $30 a piece, so I'm not gonna cry over it. Uh, as a matter of trivia, apparently the NSX, the actual speaker units like this one, uh, the NSX shares these with some uh, 80s era Corvettes Porsches, Mercedes, and a couple of other things. So you might be able to, if you knew what you were looking for, you might be able to actually, uh, you know, hit up a pick and pull, pull apart type uh, uh, wrecking yard and find some of these in functional condition. You just want to take your uh, uh, multimeter with you to check them before you go through the trouble of pulling them out, I guess. But that's what we have. Now it's just an issue of replacing the dead speakers with these new speakers and then figuring out a way to plumb all the rest of this in. It's worth noting that these replacement speakers were not entirely plug and play as the spades on the speaker terminals are bigger than either of the female connector ends on the wiring harness. So you'll have to replace these female ends with larger ones before you can connect them to the speaker, but that's not hard or expensive. All right, well, we have each of these speakers in their respective enclosures at this point. So I'm gonna go and chuck these things back in the car one more time and we'll see how long of a video this actually is. All right, so we were back in the hot seat. I have all four speakers now reconnected. I actually did manage to fish through my attic and find the uh, rear center channel speaker that I had taken out long ago because I suspected it was going bad uh, when that was probably actually the floor um, subwoofer amp that was also impacting that because they feed off the same channel. It just sends different frequencies to the you know, low frequencies to the floor speaker and then high frequencies to the rear center channel. That's how it originally worked. So we have all of these hooked up now. Uh, two of the three, I left the uh, passenger door speaker as the original because we know it worked before. Uh, but the other two floor speaker and driver's door speakers are new. 
So I'm going to quit uh, procrastinating here and we will run our test again. So here's accessory. That guy's coming on. We have aux input. And I have some royalty free music, so go. All right. All right, well, that seems like a successful test. So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to have to go and figure out what I am doing with either uh, this thing or my other, um, my equalizer as a head unit uh, surrogate for the moment. So I will come back to you with that news. But for the moment, small victories, we seem to have fully functioning speakers at this point. All right, so I've been busy. I've gotten both of the door cards put back together so the doors are completely assembled. Now that I've confirmed the speakers are working, I also put the floor uh, subwoofer back in place as well. So what we've got now is the last piece of, hopefully the last piece of our puzzle, um, at least for the moment and that is the um, equalizer preamp doodad here that I got. Now this, I'll be honest with you, this is bigger than I thought it was gonna be. It's probably about, hmm, volumetrically, it's probably three times the size I was expecting it to be based on what they said, uh, based on how it was presented. But that's neither here nor there. We'll at least give it a try. It does fit in the cavity, so I could maybe put it behind something. I'll figure it out, but, uh, First things first to see if it works. Um, so I've got it wired into the SOS harness and then I have my phone uh, plugged into one of the two inputs on this, which was kind of one of the reasons I went this direction is because the number of inputs. So let's turn the ignition on to accessory. We've got lights, that's a good start. Okay, phone is making noises. It is at appropriate volume. Which input are we on? Two. That means this needs to go down. Okay, volume's all the way down. Turn that up. Well, it was going too well, let's be honest. Um. <laughs> so welcome to a few days later and several dollars shorter. Uh, both on account of some generous donations to the swear jar, as well as procuring a little bit of new hardware. Uh, because we have a new plan. Uh, I actually did figure out what went wrong with that last test, and we'll get to it, because I think it's going to be an important uh, detail if you decide to go the direction that I'm going, either as a temporary workaround or as a permanent budget solution to a failed head unit in your NSX. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, suffice to say, I don't think it was the fault of the equalizer that I was trying to use, but I've still gone and decided to go a different direction with that. The equalizer, as I said uh, previously in the video, is bigger than I expected, and it was going to be very difficult to non-destructively and tastefully conceal that in the car somewhere. So instead, I have spent an extra few dollars here and procured a JL Audio uh, just bare bones line driver and level controller that should let me accomplish the same thing without the equalizer um, and with less inputs, but I'll be able to hide this behind the dash pretty easily. So that's what I'm gonna do now, is I'm actually gonna go and get this all wired in and set up the way that I'm gonna use it, <clears throat> and then I will talk you guys through what I did. So I had to take a break from running wires to share this with you guys, because it's hilarious. So I'm gonna flip you around here. So I needed to run some wires from the back of the console box up here to behind the dash. And I pulled this carpet back and I found this. This is like a spec 90s Nextel Motorola flip phone. It is not mine. Um, <laughs> so those of you who have been following the channel for a while know that I've had this car for like 12 years at this point. And at some point in time or another, I've more or less turned it inside out. So finding after 12 years a random uh, cell phone <laughs> behind the carpet is uh, it's entertaining. I don't know, maybe I'll keep digging. 
find something else. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see if it takes charge and find out if it's some like burner phone for a... <laughs> or more likely the previous owner's phone that he has inexplicably lost at some point in time and never could find. I have no idea how it gets behind that carpet though because there are not very many ways to accidentally drop something there. Uh, so I kind of actually wonder if it's the previous owner or if it was maybe a mechanic or something like that. But either way, these are the mysteries and things we find in cars. All right, I think I've got everything wired in. So I'm gonna take you back over to the car here, show you the setup, and then we'll test it out. Starting at the source, my jams will depart my phone and connect via a three and a half millimeter adapter to an RCA junction hidden in the center console box, where we also find the base level control knob. From there, we follow the RCA and WUB control cables up to the dash and the line driver inputs. The line driver is then connected via the Science of Speed harness to the car harness, no cutting required. Spliced in between is a small switch on the antenna power circuit, which is where we get into that detail I mentioned earlier. In the NSX, the factory Bose amps get power through the power amplifier relay. That relay is energized by what is labeled as the antenna power circuit. It's not logical, but you do need to get 12 volts to the antenna wire for things to work with the factory speakers. This is the pink white wire in the car harness or the blue wire on the SOS harness. I experimented with just tying this into the switched 12 volt, but I noted that if I did that, I heard white noise through the speakers even when nothing was playing. The switch I installed will completely de-energize the speakers when not in use. As a note, this issue didn't happen with my cheap test head unit when I had the antenna wired into it, and none of this will matter at all if you go with aftermarket speakers and a central amp. All right, so with everything hooked up, let's give this hopefully one final test. All right, ignition on, green light on, power amplifier relay power on, noises from phone. Are you listening? Oh, yeah. The base adjustment here. Yeah. Awesome. So once again, after much ado, we have the ability to play music in our car. Uh, this is way more of an ordeal than I signed up for, but we seem to be done at least for now. Uh, I will point out that I made no new holes in the NSX to accomplish that installation. Uh, the previous owner helped me out there where I installed the switch and the underdash trim panel. He had already drilled a hole there to put in a switch for a radar detector that I had removed from the car when I bought it. And the console box already had holes in it from the factory car phone that came with my NSX. Uh, <laughs> so I did no additional damage uh, in the course of this installation. Now, is it a permanent solution for me? Do I want this to be long-term? Not as much. Uh, this was always kind of intended to be a sustainable but temporary solution while I explored options once I discovered I had a dead head unit. So, uh, I'll be looking around at that, and for the meantime, I'm good. I am looking at a few things, but I, I, I you know, one of them is a little secret squirrel still at this point, so I'm not gonna say anything further about that, but. If it does pan out, it will be awesome. Uh, if it doesn't pan out, then I'll probably be stuck with the choice between, uh, you know, splashing out for a double den center console and just going modern, or having the uh, dead head unit gutted and have some the Wilman's internals put into it uh, to go that direction and keep the sort of period correct look for the uh, interior. I I don't know. I'm not a slave to originality, but I'm also not a fan of putting a a screen in a car of this vintage, so I will see. But for now, I'm gonna call it there. Uh, next video on Monday, I think, if you're watching this on Thursday, uh, we will take this car for a drive and you will get a binaural sound check. So that should be as realistic as possible if you have good headphones uh, to actually being in the car and hearing what the stereo sounds like now that it's been somewhat refurbished. 
But uh, I'm going to stop there for now. I'm going to get back to uh, buttoning things back up, and then I'm going to go run inside and furiously edit this because you will be watching this tomorrow, um, which is a tighter schedule than I like to keep. But it is what it is. Had to wait on stuff to get here, but I didn't want to leave you hanging. So until next time, I'm Richard. This is Lap of the World, and I will see you guys in the next video, if not at the track.